What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I am back, actually, from working down in the country in Waynesboro and getting back to business here. Um, we saw the tape yesterday of Michael Irving and his attorneys uh putting forth their evidence and basically letting us know that um, Marriott doesn't seem to be playing uh, by the rules, so to speak, that they are literally above the law. Um, but we may find out that there's other people that may be in hot water. Now, again, this is from Pro Football Talk. Mike Ferrello is saying that NFL Network and ESPN could be actually – in some hot water from this because this wasn't only Marriott making accusations. Now, keep in mind, anybody can make accusations about stuff going on. Anybody can basically say you can sue for a ham sandwich if you wanted to. But the thing is, is ESPN and NFL Network immediately took the side of Marriott, which is one of their sponsors. So more than, you know, when, when you think about sponsors, let, let's, let's understand what a sponsor is. That means we're paying you so that way you can say we're a sponsor. So you are mentioning our name, you know, official partner of the NFL. You immediately say, wow, okay, so these guys are in bed with the, you know, the product that I love. So they're paying the NFL. So the NFL Network and ESPN, understanding that this is one of their golden gooses, that they say that something happened, so they're kind of jumping. And here's exactly what Mike Farello, uh group actually said. As previously explained, NFL Network and ESPN removed Irving from the Super Bowl coverage following an alleged interaction with a woman inside a hotel lobby. Irving had repeatedly denied any wrongdoing and did so again on Wednesday at the news conference. My guess is the NFL was willing to jump when they got a complaint from proud sponsor of the NFL. And this is when you learn uh, learned in the discovery process. How high up the chain at Marriott did this go? How high were the alarms sounded? And how high up the NFL um, network ladder did it go? NFL network may have some liability here if Michael Irvins chooses to pursue it. So, this is where... It gets to be interesting. And this is where the, the thing that always didn't make sense to me, okay? You know, if, if it's something like, you know, it's a drunk driving case, there's a car accident, you know, there's a mug shot, you know, something happened there. And that says, let me pump the brakes on this situation because you're in the news for something happening that that's tangible. You can see it. There's a police report. There's an investigation. There's, you know, you understand what I'm saying? You can see this. And this is something you look at and say, okay. But in today's age, you can be accused of anything. Lord knows people have accused me, and I'm a nobody of stupid shit. And we all know who I'm talking about forever. It's literally, it's a, it's a flavor of the day. The problem is, is when you take accusations you're just taking their word for it. You're, you're not, you, you don't look at this and say, well, maybe they can be biased. This is where a third party should be the ones that are doing the investigation to say something here happened. So for them to automatically, just because somebody said there's an allegation with no police report, no investigation, with witnesses that counter what they're saying for the NFL network and ESPN to similarity, just, okay, we're done. We're suspending them without cause. Now, I don't know, and, and this is where I've even said a couple times in a couple of these videos, if I'm Michael Irvin and I'm vindicated, how do I feel about my employer who immediately thought the worst of me. That immediately somebody said something that immediately you believe Joe on the street. Did not give me a chance, did not let a legal process play out. None of this. 
And the fact that at this point, Marriott has basically, we're not letting you see the tape, or we're going to let you see the tape, but we're not going to let you have the tape, which is kind of end arounding the court system. Um, to me, the next step is, of course, I'm sure that Michael Irvin's attorneys will file some kind of a motion to say, judge, they're bullshit. Not in those words, but basically saying they're not allowing us to have a copy of it. We can't, you know, we're, we're trying to get prepared for court. This is discovery. This is evidence. We can't tangibly look at the evidence to defend my client and get this case going and may ask for summary judgment and say, you know what, judge, we want to get this thing over. We want my client to be whole. We have witnesses. Let's take this thing to trial sooner than later. They are not being forthright on the case. That's what I would look for Michael Irvin's people to do. And quite frankly, what Michael Irvin did yesterday was a win in public opinion the way he described everything else now you've put a person behind this you've got a person image you've got a person who's there crying now you've got a person who it's tangible in fact let's let's go to a little clip of that because see here's where it's this is where it's emotional this is he a, a woman had come around the corner kind of met Michael at the corner. They had, they had a very brief interaction that was, you know, super, you know, friendly, lots of laughter. And Michael went back to his room. I went back to my seat. And two days later, I, I read about the story that we're talking about now. Um, at any point in time, did you see anything that caused you concern, you thought was inappropriate? Uh, Mr. Everett should have done that. It's done toward. Did you see anything like that? Well, from, it's frozen Zoom. He is in Europe. Um, guys, if he comes back, I'll do it. Uh, other than that, I think that concludes our press conference. Um, these gentlemen have offered to take questions if you want to. We're not going to take questions based on the fact that we still have this current lawsuit going on. So I appreciate everybody showing up today. Let me say this. Okay. I kind of lost just listening to, to Bill talk. Because I'm struggling, this is what I struggle with, you know, you try to, and you try to be an ambassador of the league and also understand that God has blessed me and, and given me a platform and try to touch people, try to raise people, try to lift people up. I, and, and, and I don't know, I, I met a lot of fans, but I've always tried to be good with people. You know, I'm struggling now saying, do I determine, do I not talk to people? What do I do, you know, because of this kind of a situation, I know I didn't do anything wrong. I know I didn't do anything trying to do everything right. So it's just, you know, though, though, though I say that, I got to come back to this moment. Had I not said to these guys, you know what, you were cool guys, let's go outside and take that picture, you know, then they wouldn't have been right there with me. And that would have been a moment that I've had alone. And I know nobody's going to listen to what I say. Nobody, still, at least Mary, I don't want to hear what we have to say. Don't want to hear what I have to say. No one don't even care to share it. So, you know, I just got emotional thinking about it because I'm struggling with that on what to do moving forward after I deal with all of this. That's all I want to say. Yeah. And so, you know, having been to several autograph signing shows in fact there's one it's it's at the end of this month um one thing i always look forward to is getting autographs signed by players and being able to give that stuff away and um last year we did a print michael irvin and stuff uh the year before i actually met michael irvin under not the best of circumstances um when the super bowl i guess it was Super Bowl in Detroit. It was insane because that was um, Roger Goodell's first Super Bowl. It's Paul Tagliabue's last one. And they had brought back all of the living Super Bowl MVPs to that one. So you had literally everybody 
there. The Joe Montana's, the, um, the snake was there, you know, um, uh, John Riggins, you know, Emmett Smith and things. And unfortunately that night was the night that Michael Irvin found out he was not going to be a first ballot hall of famer. And I'm lucky enough to be at the NFL commissioner's party. And I remember seeing Michael Irvin standing by himself because it was literally an hour before an hour before that he found out he wasn't going to be in the hall of fame and nobody wanted to go up to him because what do you say? You know, he, you know, this is the pinnacle of your career and you're expecting to, to be there because of what you've done. And he wasn't, I looked at it as, I don't know if I'm ever going to get the chance to meet Michael Irvin again. And I walked over to him and I started talking with him, shook his hand and said, man, you're going to get there. You should be there. But, you know, and just talked and stuff. And I got a picture with Michael Irvin there. And it's funny because I've had that picture over here on the wall for many, many years. And at one of those autograph signing shows, I took that picture because I got to get him to sign it. And he looked at the suit. He looked at the picture. He was like, did I really wear that suit? Because the suit was kind of crazy. And struck up a conversation. And every time I have been there, of course, these are autograph signing shows. Um, so, you know, most, you know, you're getting paid, of course, to be there to do these things. But some people are better than others. Michael Irvin took extra time with you, had a conversation, and has been one of the nicest people that you've met. And I've met some ones that you will end up like, I want a refund after I got this because of the way they've treated you. And so now Michael Irvin being that personable guy who would always talk to people, then you start thinking, do I have something to worry about? Do I now stop talking to people? Do I shy away from people? This changes what you do when you have people accuse you of doing things that you know you did not do. And unfortunately, being a celebrity, you're in the, the, the target for people that are looking to use you for their five minutes of fame. So hopefully this doesn't change Michael Irvin, and hopefully this ends up being where Michael Irvin can get back to being Michael Irvin and get back to his jobs. I don't know how... If Michael Irvin is vindicated, how NFL Network and ESPN make it up to the employee because you automatically believe those guys without any evidence, without any proof. And it sounds like there is no proof on this tape. If there was proof of this tape of anything, that it would be out. So now... The NFL Network and ESPN are solely going by one of their paid sponsors basically saying, we want you to get rid of that guy. And that's what it boils down to. Now, I don't think that Michael Irvin and his attorneys will necessarily sue the NFL Network, which is owned by the NFL, because, again, you're still trying to be one of those people. So somehow this whole thing has to get made up or fixed. And... Quite frankly, being an NFL sponsor, if this goes to trial and Michael Irvin wins, then it makes Marriott look really, really bad. I won't say it'll kill the sponsorship because the NFL is always going to have that handout for money, and they will spend anything to the point where you'll say, okay, whatever you say. But this is not a good look by any stretch of the imagination for NFL Network, for ESPN, or Marriott all of which are sponsors of, of the game we love. And all, when you look at what's been put out so far, all of this looks like what Michael Irvin said, modern-day lynching. We'll see what the next court piece is on this, and we'll find out where this goes. But if I were the NFL, I would be saying to Marriott right now, you need to settle this thing and get this thing out the news. You need to settle this thing and get it out the news. Because if you are sitting here as an NFL player or a spokesman or something like that, and we're putting you up the Marriott, do you feel comfortable at the moment for what happened? 
I'm not sure you do. All right, good people. We'll keep following this, and we'll bring you up to speed with anything else that changes. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you soon.